Happy Monday, COP family, and welcome to your message recap. My name is Larisha Johnson, and as always, it is an honor to welcome our very own Elder Cindy Kane. How you doing? I'm good. I'm good. So excited to be with the both of you and with our friends and family. So Cindy and I have been, uh, Elder Cindy and I have been texting, getting preparing back and forth for this um, this particular recap. And we let Bishop know we expect to have a good old churchy, oily recap. We are so excited for what is to come. And with that, without further ado, we is a pleasure always to welcome Dr. Dr. Bishop Lovelace. How are you doing, sir? I'm doing excellent. Thank you for the opportunity to share and to be with you all. Oh, goodness, family. So before we um, jump in, as always, we just want to do housekeeping to remind you that you can go to our website. That is www.cop.church. You can also go to our mobile app, COP mobile app on every platform. Um, but there you can download the sermon notes. You can rewatch the messages, rewatch the message recap. Um, and I highly encourage you to do that. There's also Omni Group notes as well. You can stay in touch with what's happening at the center. We're in the fall, winter season. So much is happening, so many good things. So you want to make sure you're plugged in. Um, you can sign up with Omni Groups. Again, so many things that you can do on our website and our app. So please take the time to do that. And with that said, we are going to jump into this week's discussion. We are in part six of our series entitled Gifts of the Holy Spirit. Uh, this weekend's teaching is entitled, Respond, Receive, and to Redirect, the Attitude of Serving with Our Gifts. And this is a part of, from, from many of you know, that we've been a year-long um, focus of the ministry of the Holy Spirit. So we're just continuing in that flow. Uh, I want to give you a scripture reference before we jump in. So you want to make sure you jot down 1 Corinthians 1. Uh, we pay most of our time in verses 1 through 9. And then you'll skip down to verses 18 through 31. Please do read the entire chapter and the entire book. But just for this particular discussion, that's where we're going to spend our focus today. And so I just want to kind of jump in right there, uh, Bishop. One of the things I think for me just resonated the most about this weekend's teaching was this just reminder that everything starts with the cross. It starts with God. It starts with the cross and even our gifts to approach them from a place of humility and that we need to respond um, to the gifts as well of the spirit from this place of humility and that we do that by remembering the power and the ministry of the cross. So I wanted to start right there, Bishop. Um, how does remembering the power and the ministry of the cross help us to kind of redirect our attitudes, our thinking about serving with our gifts. Absolutely. Uh, you know, I I really was so blessed by the teaching this weekend uh, in regards to the fact that uh, the cross, uh, the symbol of the cross, the emblem of the cross uh, is central or a central symbol of the Christian faith. It is um, that which reflects upon uh, both God's outstretched arms to all of humankind and then uh, the Lord Jesus and his ministry, uh, you know, uh, vertically to God the Father himself. So the, the, the horizontal reach to us and the vertical reach to God. And that cross, um, though often depicted as being something that we see, you know, that we see on our wall or maybe we wear around our neck and it's nice and polished and smooth and so forth, it really does not fully capture the, the horrific uh, expression of the cross, uh, the suffering that would take place on our behalf uh, with the cross. And uh, so, you know, it was a very horrific type of death uh, that was practiced, uh, crucifixion and so forth. So there was nothing that was very beautiful about it. It, it was an old rugged cross and uh, the, it was an emblem indeed of suffering and shame. Mm -hmm. And yet there is, as the songwriter says, that we cherish that Cross. We cherish the old rugged cross. And as I pointed out in the teaching this weekend, my concern is that on any given Sunday, you can go into most 
Christian congregations and not hear any mention of the cross mm -hmm. or um, in some instances a uh, desire to even have the cross removed. Mm -hmm. uh, it is thought to be, you know, we don't need to deal with that. Let's just push people forward. And the thought that God gave, gave us through the teaching this weekend was that uh, not only the centrality of the cross, but its direct tie to the preaching of the gospel, the ministry of the gospel. And uh, later in the text that you gave, the idea that we, as we are used and God uh, blesses us in these, uh, what he talks about earlier in the text, spiritual gifts. He says, you have been enriched with uh, knowledge. You've been enriched with speech. You've got all of the education. You've got all of the various things that have been put at your disposal uh, regarding human wisdom, he mm -hmm. says. But beyond that, there is something else that we have been given, and that is uh, all of the spiritual gifts. Now, this is the first time I've actually seen that in that text, mm -hmm. in uh, or even in that context where it talks about the, the 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 cross, the ministry of the gospel, the preaching of the gospel, the the foolishness mm -hmm. of uh, the, the the preaching of the gospel in the sense that it doesn't it doesn't make any human reasoning yeah. that God would do this for us through yeah. Jesus Christ. And yet there is a direct alignment with the release of mm -hmm. spiritual gifts that are given to the body of Christ. And I think he further solidifies it in regards to our attitude by saying, uh, God has done this so that none of us can boast. Mm -hmm. Because the, the, the reality is, as we are used, as we have these gifts, as we have these special abilities, the natural propensity would be to boast. Look what I can do. Yeah. Look what I'm able to do. Look at what I have. And so it would be a, this propensity to want to boast about. It. He said, no, 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 no. He says, whatever boasting we have, let it be in the Lord. Let it be going right back to what Jesus did. God did this. And so I think for me, uh, when we talk about the attitudes of serving with our gifts, uh, it is that of of, of expressing a thankfulness or thanksgiving to constantly walking in the shadow of what Jesus did mm -hmm. for us, a once and for all work that he did for us so that we would not only have everlasting life, but that we would be able to uh, express that everlasting life, minister everlasting life to others. Mm -hmm. And so... Uh, I, I, again, uh, I, I think that when I think of the work of Jesus Christ on the cross for me, uh, I owe God. I, I, you don't have to beg me to want to be used of God or to want to serve God. The first thing I want to do is run and, and share what he has done for me with thanksgiving um, because the grace of God was not cheap. Uh, the grace of God came with great price, great sacrifice. And sometimes we constantly talk about, oh, grace, grace, and grace. And we should. Mm -hmm. And the freedom of that grace. And we should, as it relates to uh, his grace and mercy, as it relates to no work of our own. Mm -hmm. But we must acknowledge who did the work <laughs> mm -hmm. and what work was done. Right. You know, grace is not just suggesting, oh, it's no work of my own. It's no That's work of my own. Great. But now let's talk about whose work was it <laughs> and what was the work yes. done so that our ministry of freedom wow. is embraced by that great work. That is an everlasting work, the shedding of blood, the sacrifice. And if we can do that, then I believe it enables us to minister in a, in a heart of thanksgiving and willingness and just enthusiasm because of the wonderful grace of God that has been demonstrated to us. Ooh, Michelle, oh. that was a loop that needed to be closed for me, like a circle, like a full circle moment. <laughs> we, we do talk a lot, a lot about, 
no work of our own and it's not but there was a work that was done that's so good oh sorry elder city that's just so good i just had to say that. no no it is so good and it reminds me it must it had to have been in the early like the first quarter of the year because bishop you sh you pointed out to us that we were saved by grace yeah. right that grace god didn't even create the world with grace mm -hmm. but he saved us that's with good. grace that's all good. of god's it took all of god's power all yeah. of God's power to save me. Yeah. How could I not serve that God then? Yeah. How could I not? And you know, and to tie in what you said earlier, Bishop, there is with that understanding, there's nothing I can boast about. There's nothing no. I can boast no. about. I didn't even seek out God on my own. I just responded mm -hmm. to him coming after me. Mm -hmm. yes. There's nothing I can boast about that. Nothing. Yeah. Nothing. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, gosh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I think that's what releases us to um, a full, authentic mm -hmm. embrace of the spiritual gifts, not just uh, talent, not just abilities. When we speak of God's grace gifts, his gifts of grace, his spiritual gifts, I don't believe it is simply captured within the four, four walls of a church building. I believe that we carry those gifts into our office, into, well, first our families, our, mm -hmm. our school, our, the, you know, the store, we carry those gifts out. And I believe that ultimately those gifts are also used to help us to evangelize and to share mm -hmm. the gospel. Yes. Uh, it's not right. for us just to toss toys around and say, look what I got. Right. <laughs> I think ultimately that whether it be, you know, all, any of the gifts that are mentioned in scripture, some 20 and all nine that we tend to place most emphasis on yeah. are gifts that are given not only for the edification of the body, but they are also given to us for the purposes of going out and sharing the good news. Mm -hmm. How do we witness to someone uh, effectively. I believe God puts the gift of word of knowledge upon us or word of wisdom. Sometimes it is a prophetic gift. Sometimes it could be ministry of healing mm -hmm. that God uses to draw someone to the Lord Jesus Christ. So uh, again, the, the, the point being is that, the, is that we, we, we work from not to, uh, to the cross as though there's still work to be done, but we work from the cross because the work has been done. Come on. And that shadow of the cross is upon us that continues to remind us. You know, some people say, well, why would I want to keep thinking about the death of Jesus? Why would I want to keep remembering that? Well, the reality is that's what we do in the Eucharist, in communion. We are remembering the sacrifice of the Lord Jesus Christ and what yeah. he did for us and the shedding of blood that we're partaking of the body and uh, when we eat the bread, we're taking partaking of the blood. When we drink the cup, it is to remind us of what the Lord has done for us. If there was no shedding of blood, there is no atonement. No, really. <laughs> there's no, if there's no sacrifice, there is no salvation. If there, if none of those things happen, if we neglect that, if we don't reflect upon that, then in essence, we forget the depth of what Christ went through for us so that we might be free. So, yeah. Oh, oh, oh. And, and we operate in our gifts so that others can know the gospel, yes. so that others come, right? Because I, I think about what often, well, not often, but what can be shared in churches, right? And so like, as you said this weekend, right? How to get the car, how to get the house, or, and I don't know if this is, a trend necessarily, or just always loop back around. Like what is our purpose and how, you know what I'm saying? And so people writing books and sending you to conferences and all of that is fine, but we already know the answer to it. Mm -hmm. Our yes. purpose is to point others to God. And how do we do that without talking about the cross? Absolutely. There's no other which, way. Which, which literally the cross does not start in the mentioning obviously of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, mm -hmm. there are evidence that we see even the cross being referenced within the Old Testament. In fact, all the way back, even at the beginning in Genesis, where it talks about the heel of the woman 
bruising the seed of the woman, the heel of the seed of the woman, bruising the adversary's head yeah. and, and talking about there would be a day that there would be a redeemer who would come and he would reverse the curse that has been brought upon the earth because of sin. So with that reversal, by the bruising of the serpent's head, by the seed of the woman, by the bruising, by his heel, and the bruising of no. that, it is a reminder that God's sacrifice, Jesus' sacrifice on the cross, reversed the curse for us. Without the shedding of blood, there would have been no atonement. You cannot have the shedding of blood unless someone goes to the cross. And so that's why we, we reflect upon uh, the cross and, and, and the power of there could not be a resurrection until yeah. there was a cross, yeah. you know. And so we can't bypass that. We can't just run past that. Uh, it is part of who, how we identify with Christ. If we identify with him in his death, yeah. then we also will identify with him in his life. Yeah. And so we want to be able to identify the suffering, identify mm. uh, the fact that he uh, cried out to his father. Why has, why has thou forsaken me? Why did God the father turn his back on his very only begotten son mm. because he took on sin for us? And Christ, uh, by taking on that sin, he who knew no sin, took on sin for us. And because of that, we have been restored into right standing relationship with the Lord Jesus, with the, with the father because of the work of the Lord Jesus. So. Ooh. And then for me, there's just so much gratitude in that Bishop, just how can you not yes. be so thankful for what he did? And exactly. this reminder is just, it reminded me also that we, didn't get here by ourselves. We didn't make ourselves. We're not self-made and, you know, someone sacrificed yes. for us. And it makes me think of That's like right. the people who came before us as well. Like all the people who sacrificed for us to be where we are and who we are. It just, for me, That's just right. kind of breaks down that whole self-made. Yes, right. I don't know. I don't, yes. I don't know what that is, but yes, we just paid yes. the ultimate sacrifice. But at, I guess my point yeah. is like all of us come really from a long line of sacrifice. We are not just, of ourselves so that was that was yes. just so powerful for me to remember yeah 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 it moves us from a place of selfishness yeah. to understanding the power of selflessness yeah you know fact that you know uh christ uh literally uh in could have called down millions of angels all he had to do was snap his finger and everything could have gone a whole different way but because of the selfless act of obedience to his father. Uh, and again, going through the entire process for us right. so that the blood is perpetually before God as, again, a sign of righteousness that, uh, as in the Old Testament, death passed over mm -hmm. you know, because of the blood of the Lamb, who was slain before foundation of the world, you know, even before Golgotha, it was already destined for this to happen. So that's why we have to continue to look back and not only look back and reflect, but we have to look back with thanksgiving and appreciation. And it eradicates any movement of arrogance within ourselves or selfishness within ourselves. It moves us into a place of saying that, Lord, we are thankful and uh, what shall I render for all of your blessings and goodness shown towards us? Ooh, that's so rich. I swear that could be a teaching all in itself. Just, ugh. yeah. we won't do that here, but I'm just saying it's <laughs> so, so, so good. Oh my goodness. I, I wanted to read before we get into our, and this is in this and stay in this vein, but I wanted to read first Corinthians one and 18 and we'll go through a, a few more scriptures before we um, end our discussion, but uh, 1 Corinthians 1 and 18 reads, For the word of, of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but it is to, but it is the power of God to us who are being saved. 
And Elder Cindy, I, I wanted to have you help us kind of talk through, um, again, a, about our gifts, our spiritual gifts, but just releasing those gifts with humility and simplicity. How does that, again, point back to the gospel? I think it, it, it points back to the gospel in that the gospel is one that is based on humility and simplicity. I, Bishop, you said this this weekend, I think it was in the 930, that we we make it so complicated and 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 that is and part of me wonders well i think that's for two reasons one i think sometimes we like to complicate things because then i get to show you how smart i am and you know and i could you know attempt to have some kind of control cuz i'm the one who can tell you how how to do it you know whatever but also is i don't know if we fully recognize that it is a simple gospel. Mm -hmm. And like, you know, there's something in us, I think at times can want to say, well, it has to be more. Well, I have to do more and it can't just be that. And you know, that idea. And I was actually thinking this weekend on the way home from church, um, I picked up Noel at the Omni factory and we're driving home and I'm like, well, what happened at church today? T t um, tell me. And at six, she said, we learned that Jesus died for our sins because yeah. he loved us. Yeah. Right? Yeah. What's a sin? Sin, sin are things that God doesn't like. Right. And like it's at six, yeah. she understood that. Right. And 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 that's it. And so I think it's it 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 points back to the gospel because it reminds us, as we said in the last question, right? It I have to operate in my gift in humility because when I really understand fully the not only where my gift come from but also the price that was paid for my gifts there's literally nothing i can boast about right so like i have to have humility in that also in that that reminds me even as bishop is sharing was sharing this weekend right when we're talking about all of the other stuff and not pointing to the cross if we're not careful mm. that's going to easily lead us to look at me, I'm so great, I'm so wonderful. I, you know, if you would just do what I did, you could be like, yeah. you know, it's so easy to get down that road. But when I constantly bring myself back to the cross, humility, I again, I have nothing to boast about, but also I can recognize that it is really, the gospel is it. It really doesn't need anything else added to it, right? We don't have to, we don't have to dumb it down so kids can understand. They got it, right? We don't have to add glitz and all the other stuff to draw folks in. The Holy Spirit can do that, that part. All we have to talk about is Jesus Christ and him crucified. Yes. That's it. That, yes. That's it. And and I again, I think the struggle for some for some believers with that's it is again, going back to the first question, we don't fully embrace or understand the sacrifice that it took to do that. Right. It, yeah. And we weren't there. Right. So like, you know, I can read about it. I've seen movies depicting it. You know, we can do all of that. Um, but again, I think it also in that brings us back to our full understanding our understanding of the gospel is foolishness to us. We need the Holy Spirit. The yeah. Holy Spirit is yeah. who helps me to recognize, oh, yeah. this is really, really great. This is really, really huge. And we can share it simply. Mm. Yeah. That's good. That's good. Mm. No, that's that's really good. You know, if I can just jump in there and, mm. and say this, you know, as you were talking, I I think exactly what you've stated. We either feel like we've got to alter mm. the message to either bring it down or we got to pull it up <laughs> instead of just receiving the message for what it is. We either got to dummy it down or we've got to bring it up to some complicated, analytical, you know, nice sound. It kind of reminds me, I remember growing up in the church and you would have certain preachers who would come and pontificate uh, messages, 
And they would use these big, big words. I mean, they would go through this whole string of words and we'd all be sitting there now and they'd use these huge words. I mean, going on and on and on and da 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 And we'd all say, all right, say that, preacher. And nobody knew what they were saying. But we were impressed by big words. And it always amazed me of how you know, we we get impressed with each other. Uh, we get impressed with our vernacular, our, our vocabulary. We get impressed with, you know, human reasoning. But I'm reminded of what um, I believe it's in Isaiah 35 and 8 says, where it talks about there is a highway. It compares the gospel, the good news, to being a highway. And even goes on to say it is the way of holiness. Mm -hmm. And it goes on to say in the latter part of the verse that in one verse in translation says, even a wayfaring fool mm -hmm. can find it. Yeah. You know, you don't have to be an intellect, mm -hmm. intellectual to find this highway of holiness or this way of holiness. Mm -hmm. God has simplified it. Simply believe and receive. Believe and not believe and do this and then do this and do this and do this and then you can receive. But simply b believe in the heart and confess with the mouth. Believe in the heart and confess with the mouth. That 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 is the what do we believe in? We're believing what Jesus Christ has done for us. Yeah. And we're confessing what Jesus has done for us. I think the biggest shock for a lot of people years ago when I preached a message and talked about when you are born again to receive Jesus in your life, you do not confess your sins. Mm -hmm. And folk were like, oh no, oh, you're blasphemous. How do you mean you don't confess our sins? I said, if we were, if it was a matter of confessing our sins mm -hmm. in order for us to be saved, then we would have a problem because I can't remember them all. That part. But Paul turns around, he says, no, don't, he didn't say confess your sins to be saved. He says, believe and confess the Lord Jesus and you shall be saved. And then after you are saved, then we confess our sins and he is faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That is a part of what happens as a result of being saved. But to get saved or to receive Jesus is a matter of believing what he's done, not confessing what I've done, but confessing what Jesus has done. And every time we think of the cross, every time we partake in the Lord's Supper, we are confessing what Jesus has done for us. And as we confess that, it is, a re, again, uh, continuing to affirm our covenant relationship that we have with God that is not based upon us making a covenant with him, but rather he made a covenant with us. And the covenant he made with us didn't even have to do with us. We were just the observers and benefactors. It was a covenant that he made between himself concerning us. That's the cover. I, I have to believe, thank you, God. I have to believe that by just hearing what you just, just said, there are folks being freed to fully walk in the fullness of God, because I Hallelujah. have to imagine there are folks who have believed that they are not fully saved because they haven't confessed all their sins or they got to yeah. keep on confessing their sins yeah. or who do I confess my sins to? And to your point, what if I don't remember all of the sins you said somebody has been set free is that we need to confess Hallelujah. Jesus. That's yeah. it. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Mm. Just confess Jesus. Yeah. Just mm. confess the Lord. That's why I get moved and touched when a child can receive the gospel. A child mm -hmm. can receive the good news at six and at seven years old. I mean, you mean tell me, what is the six-year-old, what all do they have to confess? You know, <laughs> <laughs> what, uh, what sins, what all the horrible sins does a five-year-old and a six-year-old, who many of our babies, they ask the Lord to come in their life at six and seven years old. And when I received the Lord at age seven, I didn't have a whole bunch of, you know, I didn't smoke, chew, or hang with those who do. I just, 
I just heard the gospel that there was a savior who loved me and I wanted to receive him into my life. And I confessed him in, as Lord of my life at the age of seven and have been walking in it. And since then, when I do sin, I confess my sins, knowing that I walk in fellowship through forgiveness. That's the key. It has nothing to do with my relationship. My relationship is established at age seven, but my fellowship can be established at age 62 based upon my continuous confession of those things that I know are not honoring of God. And as I confess those things and speak those things, he is faithful and just to forgive me and cleanse me. That's the ongoing work of the gospel. That's the sanctifying work of the gospel. That, that's, that's the beauty of this. That's so good. Oh. You, it's so good, right? I, real quick, you often hear folks talk about like, revival is coming and we need to trust God. And first of all, I don't know what they're talking about. Like, I don't know what that yep. really means, right? For everybody. Mm -hmm. But if we are going to see true revival yes. in the body of Christ, it will mm -hmm. come from us embracing the gospel and that's it. Yes. Yes. That's it. If we embrace yes. this, yes, everything else, everything, yes. literally everything else will come into play. Yes. Yeah. Mm. I'm just thinking about what you said earlier, um, not too long ago, Elder Cindy, about folks getting set free in that area. I, I think it also sets folks free to just walk in their gifts. Like he's already paid the mm -hmm. price. Like there's no more you need to yeah. add to it. There's no more you need to fix about yourself. Just walk in those gifts. Wherever God places you, just walk those out because you're free to do it. Like do it. Oh, yeah. it's so good. Like yeah. uh, Pastor uh, Phyllis told us a week ago, <laughs> release your miracles. Like, oh, my miracle. You have what somebody yeah. needs on the inside of you. I just, yeah. it's that freedom of knowing that he really has paid that price and has done that work. So just be free in what he's already placed inside you and walk that out. Yeah, our teaching. Oh, that's so, so, so good. Um, I wanted to close us out with, I wanted to go back to first Corinthians and it's a few verses, but this is like the last three or four verses. So we're going to go, yeah. um, 23 through 25, but it's so rich y'all. And then we'll, that'll take us into our last question. And it reads, but we preach Christ crucified, a stumbling block to the Jews and foolishness to the Gentiles. Yet to those who are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ is the power of God and the wisdom of God, because God's foolishness is wiser than human wisdom, and God's weaknesses is stronger than human strength. And Bishop, yeah. I wanted to kind of close us out our discussion and talking through, having you talk us through, just understand it again about the gifts of the Spirit are possible because of the sacrifice. There are no gifts of the spirit. Absolutely. Sacrifice. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, uh, I I love that passage because he makes this clear understanding that the gospel, the good news, the work the, of the cross and all of this was so baffling uh, that he he drives it home unapologetically. We preach Christ crucified. <laughs> we preach Christ crucified. We preach Christ crucified. And it causes the religious leaders uh, uh, of the day in, in the context of the Jews. He was referring to that by saying that it's a stumbling block for them, you know, because uh, of the fact that, first of all, they don't, you know, the religious leaders did not accept Jesus. Uh, they did not embrace Jesus. And then it's a challenge even for the most intellectual, the Greeks, because it does not fall in the context of human reasoning, which they were masterful mm -hmm. at wanting to understand that. And, you know, Paul understood this well, because when, by the time he's ministering to the Corinthians, Apollos, who was one of their major teachers, Apollos was known for his eloquent speaking and his ability to analyze the texts and so forth. Whereas Paul was, even though he was knowledgeable of the word and God had given him great understanding of, of, of the Old Testament and so forth, the Old Covenant, he 
uh, took this posture of knowing nothing. It's almost like he considered those things to be nothing mm -hmm. in his receiving Christ. He he let go of all of those things because of the reality that when he received God into his life, when Christ came into the life of the Apostle Paul, uh, there was a simplicity that embraced his heart. He, 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 you know, the things he went through of, you know, seeing Jesus on the road of Damascus and and uh, being uh, blind and going to the house of the prophet and receiving the infilling of the Holy Spirit and having hands laid upon him and receiving healing. I mean, he got he got knocked down a couple of notches. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> uh, in 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 humility. I mean, it just brought him down in a sense of humility. But I think what solidified the humility for him was this understanding that uh, Christ crucified. The Christ that was crucified, he later would see him in the heart of Paul, that God was able to release gifts into his life that enabled him to write great portions of what we now refer to as the new covenant mm -hmm. and minister to the Gentiles, where even the religious didn't want to go and minister to the Gentiles. He would get criticized for that. Right. And yet he did it because, again, this gospel this message of Christ crucified. Somebody says again, how is that good news? Well, because it could have been me and should have been me. And without Jesus doing it, we were eternally cut off from a holy God. And so the good news is that Christ took our place. And in preaching that, again, it moves us into a place of understanding uh, the depth of the sacrifice, the depth of what Christ did for us, um, that this was costly. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it puts us into a place that we, we again look at that and, and, and we say, Lord, all of that for me? Mm -hmm. All of that for me? And as I taught this weekend, when you know the sacrifice, you can appreciate the gift. When you know the sacrifice, you can appreciate the outcome. When you don't know the sacrifice, you can take the outcome for granted. Mm -hmm. You can take what you see for granted. And, uh, but when you know what went into it, and we only know a fraction of it, we don't know the full scope of it. You know? But what we do know when we think on those things, and then I like the John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him would not perish, but would have everlasting life. God loved, he gave. God loved, he gave. There's something about what it starts with God and is carried with love, then he gives. Mm -hmm. So the gifts. God loves, he gives. Our gifts operate in love. Mm -hmm. Our gifts operate in the same love of the one who is the originator of the gift. We have gifts from the gift giver. <laughs> the gift giver, the one who gave the original gift, mm -hmm. the one who gave the greatest gift. Mm -hmm. He gives us these gifts and these gifts operate with us in the same spirit in the one who who gave his only begotten son that we might have everlasting life and not perish. That shifts the whole attitude of how we move in ministering the gifts of the spirit. It, there is no room for arrogance. There's no room for look at me. There's no room for I'll decide if I want to come back or don't want to come back. I'll sing when I want to sing. I'll preach if I want to preach. I'll do it changes the whole narrative. How dare I? do anything less than serve and offer myself to the Lord to be used of him because he has given everything for us. Mm. Mm. Woo. And he, he did that when I was his enemy. 
Yes. He could have waited. He could yeah. have waited yeah. until I said, oh, wait, no, no, I need to be saved. Come on. Yeah. I need some help. But when I hated God, he yeah. still, that's when he did it. That's when he did it. Oh, my gosh. That's when he did it. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Mm. That's when he did it. He doesn't wait for us to get it together. He says, I will do everything that is necessary for us to have fellowship and relationship with God, the father. So that all we now oh. do is walk in the works that he created in us before him. Ooh, that's so good. I, uh, this weekend I led the communion and, uh, God took me to Ephesians two and it oh. talks about like without Christ, Right. And so like, you know, the way it's set up is without Christ, we had no hope. Yes. There was a wall between us and God of hostility. Yes. It also says that we were so far away that it took yes. the blood of Jesus Christ yes. to yes. come and reach us yes. and grab that it it puts into or it helps to quiet the um accusations of the enemy that i'm too far gone god doesn't love me or god can't use me or right so even in that um looking at other people's gifts right and because their gifts look so shiny and everything right we don't know and or let me say looking at some folks operating possibly in their talents and not necessarily yeah. even gifts, right? And we think that's what it is because what we have or not recognizing um, the sacrifice, yeah. right? But like understanding all of what took place yes. for us to be saved, yes. it again, it silences the accusations of the enemy. There's nothing. We, we, when the enemy comes chirping in our ears, we get to just say, look at the cross. That's yeah. it. Yeah. That's it. That's it. Yeah. And that releases us from carrying the burden that comes along with that accusation. Yeah. Yes. We don't have to take, I don't have to take that. Because yeah. I when he hated me, he still sent his son to die for me. Yes. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think that, you know, it 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 really reminds us of again just the blessing of of the cross, um, I'll let the, I don't want to sound like I'm advertising for any particular organization, but I'm always grateful when I go into a particular medical institution in our region. And when I'm in the medical facilities, I'll look in many times in every hospital room and various places in the hall, they'll have a cross. Now I realize that there are people as uh, the, the, the late, Reverend Gardner C. Taylor said, he said, there are people who use the vilest of languages, a vilest of language, men and women, in the face or in the presence of that cross. Mm -hmm. He said, not knowing the depth of what that cross represents. Mm -hmm. But he says, what would happen if we were to take another glance mm -hmm. at the cross? Uh, he uses the analogy in one of his writings of the legion of soldiers who were sitting there and were uh, basically bartering and gambling over the robe of Jesus, the, the you know the, the 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 robe that he would have worn, and he said, not knowing that that same robe that they were gambling over, not knowing the value of it, just thinking it was a very valuable robe, not recognizing that there was a very feeble woman that one day with an issue of blood reached and touched the hem of his garment and was healed with that very garment, you know? And he said, sometimes we become too common and we, we see these things and we're like, ah, we don't understand again, the sacrifice. Mm -hmm. And so he uses this analogy. We like the soldiers. What if we took another glance at the cross? If we turned away, but look back and took another glance, would it change our perspective that when we see the cross, it's not this nice shellacked, smooth edge. It's That's what we see, but 
there is that which it represents mm. that I think we have to tie into. Uh, Jesus in his physical body would have only have hoped to be on something as smooth as what we see hanging on the wall or even hanging in the cathedral. That's not the point. The point is, is that it reminds us of the brutality, mm -hmm. the highest level of wickedness that was presented mm -hmm. towards humankind to one individual who in that moment took that and made it the grandest expression of God's love towards us. <laughs> that is so powerful to me. And in doing so, it, it set us free. We keep going back to this. What is powerful about this is that the work of the cross set us free to be used to do the things that pleases God and honors God. It was not in us to please God in our own strength and ability. Mm -hmm. But Jesus in his sacrifice set us free to now be able to do the things that we do that I pray are not only honoring to him, but certainly are a blessing to others as it has been a blessing to us. Mm -hmm. That's exactly, I'm so glad you said that, Bishop, because that's exactly what this teaching has has done for me and has meant for me. It's caused me to take another look at the cross. It really, really, Amen. it really has deeply. So thank you. Oh, well, goodness, y'all. We're going to wrap this up. Oh, uh, Bishop, before we wrap it up, we'll have Elder Cindy prayers out, but is there uh, any encouragement you want to leave with us as we start a new week? For many of us, we're going into Thanksgiving week. And yeah, I, I, I just want to encourage all of us to, uh, you know, stay close mm -hmm. to the cross. Stay close to the cross um, in every aspect of life, every day. Mm -hmm. Reflect upon the goodness of God shown towards us, how he demonstrates his love for us. That, that's what's powerful about it. God demonstrated his love while, as was stated earlier, while we were yet alienated, enemies of God, enemies of the cross. Mm -hmm. But yet he would not come down for the, from the cross to save himself, but he decided to die to save us. Uh, indeed, you know, Jesus went to the Calvary as the songwriter says, to die for someone like you and me. He hung his head and then he died, you know, and, uh, but that's not how the story ends. He got up on the third day, but I'm glad that uh, he shed his blood, that you and I can have this everlasting life. It's eternal life. It's not just life to get a nice car, nice house, nice job. Those things are wonderful. Those things are great. We give God praise for it. But I am so glad he saved our soul. He saved our soul. And that is, you know, what profit does it mean to have all of those things, but lose your soul? We have our soul back because of what Jesus did for us. That, that Stay close to the cross. Mm. Oh, that is beautiful. We have our soul back. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Ooh, Elder Cindy, the floor is yours. Yes. Let's pray. Father God, how we love you, God, and how yes, we God. honor you. God, we thank you so much, God, that indeed you loved us so much, God, that you gave your only son for us. God, you did this, Father God, when we were separated from you, when we were your enemies, God, you still chose, God, to give us your son so that we could have everlasting life. God, I thank you that by no other name, God, can anyone be saved. There is no other name under heaven, God, that we can be saved but by the name of Jesus, God. So, God, I thank you, God, that each and every day, Father God, we will take time. We will be intentional, God, God, to remember what happened at Calvary for us, God. God, we will remember, God, what Jesus went through on our behalf, God. Yes, God, Lord. we recognize that it should have been us, God, on that cross. But instead, Jesus Christ took on our sin, God, and he placed our 
sin on the cross, God. And in exchange, God, we get to be called righteous. Yes. And so, Father, we are so thankful for that, God. We are thankful that we are now joint heirs with Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And we thank you, God, that that same power that raised Jesus from the dead, that power lives in our mortal bodies even now, Father. Thank you, God, for your Holy Spirit that reminds us, God, God, of what Jesus Christ did. Thank you for your Holy Spirit, God, that brings clarity to the word, God. Yes. God, we are no longer foolish, God, to what your word tells us because the Holy Spirit, God, is the translator, God. God clears it up for us, directs us, uh, gives us understanding, Father. And God, for that, we are so thankful. And God, we thank you that not only, God, did you save us, Father, but God, you gave us gifts, God, through the power of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father. God, we will embrace the gifts that you have given us, God, not for our own benefit, Father, God, but we will embrace the gifts that you have given us, God, for the uh, blessing of others, God, and God, turning others, God, towards the cross as well. Yes. Thank you, God, that in you, we have our purpose. In you, God, we have our vision. In you, God, we have the course that you have set out for us, God. Thank you, God, that we do not have to wonder, God, what you have called us to do. But instead, God, we will acknowledge and embrace and walk out the fact, God, that you have called us to be your hands, to be your feet, God, to be your mouthpiece in the earth. So God, we are going to use our gifts, God. We are not going to hold back from our gifts, God. We recognize, God, that we owe you our service, Father. We yes. owe this to you for all that you've done for us. So God, I thank you that after this teaching, Father, we are now not only more equipped, God, but we are more confident. God, we will operate in our gifts with boldness, yes. Father. God, remembering all that it took for us to have those gifts. God, we thank you so much um, for connecting us with the Center of Praise Ministries. We are excited, God, God, to see that you, you have spent an entire year, God, allowing us to uh, learn of your Holy Spirit, God. We know that was for a purpose, God, that wasn't by accident. So, God, we fully um, embrace what you have for us. God, we say yes, and we trust you yeah. with the outcome, God, we thank you um, of what is to come based upon, God, all that we have been equipped with and learned. God, we thank you so much, God, for this gift of your word. Thank you, God, for our pastor. Thank you, God, for his obedience. Thank you, God, for his heart, for his ear that is in tune and tuned to you, God. God, we thank you so much that as he has poured out to us on this weekend, God, that you are even now, God, re-strengthening him and pouring back into him. Thank you so much, God, for him. Thank you, God, for Lady Di and his family, God. God, we are just celebrating all that you have in store for us. And God, yes. now we thank you for each person who is viewing this, who is hearing this, even that person right now who is thinking of someone to forward this to, that person, God, who is receiving this, even yes. maybe never even having heard of our ministry, God. God, we thank you so much that the um, bondage is removed, the weight is is lifted. God, they are not going to focus or think they have to confess their sins to you in order to be saved, but instead mm -hmm. they're just going to believe and confess that Jesus Christ is Lord mm -hmm. and that he raised from the dead and that he lives with in, in us, God. God, we are excited, God, for the freedom, God, that understanding the gospel gives to your people. Bless everyone, God, who has heard this, God. God, who is hearing this, will hear this. We are so excited for them, God, on what they will um, walk through, God, and experience. Thank you, Father, God, that you are giving us the opportunity on this week, God, to gather with friends, to gather with our families, God. God, we are indeed so thankful. We will have a heart of thanksgiving every day for you, God. God, help us, God, to be mindful of those who are without Help us, God, to be a generous people. Help us, God, to take our eyes off of just our blessing, God, but instead we want to focus our eyes on where we can be a blessing. So God, yes. we ask God, even on this week, God, you will open our eyes and show us where you are working, God. And that is where we'll go. That is who we will talk to. That is who we will bless. God, we thank you so much for that. Father, we thank you for all of these things and we count them done in the matchless name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen.
Amen. Amen. And Elder Cindy. Woo, we're so grateful for you. Thank you Amen. for praying through. Bishop, we are so grateful for you. Family, we're grateful for Thank you. you. Gratitude week, as they call it, but it's gratitude every day. But I just wanted to express Absolutely. my faith and just, again, just appreciation for the two of you and how you pour into us week over week. And there's so many that, uh, you know, pour into what we do here at the message recap. It's not just three of us. There's Elder Jackie and there's people behind the scenes. Some of you may or may not know. And then all of our pastor and our teaching team. So just thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, until the next time we talk again, family, walk out your gifts with joy and peace.